good evening guys this is dr paul thank you very much for tuning to our channel today as always we discuss very important points on our channel we don't go for uh, unnecessary topics on this channel today i want to talk a few minutes about uh, norwalk virus you see norwalk virus is commonly associated with one word that is uh, cruise ship remember that it is the most common cause of viral gastroenteritis around the world and it is linked with uh, a school in uh, Norwalk in Ohio where this uh, disease was found for the first time this virus is a non-segmented single-stranded positive polarity RNA genome so it's a non-enveloped virus a non-enveloped RNA virus that's all you have to remember for microbiology uh, perspective but the important point is is the most common cause of viral gastroenteritis around the world now Norwalk virus has not been grown efficiently in uh, cell cultures so its replicative cycle has been difficult to study it is presumed to replicate in a manner similar to that of other picornoviruses so don't worry about that stuff the most important thing is uh, how people get this virus how it is transmitted it is transmitted by fecal oral route people ingest contaminated seafood or sea water and uh, they are in group settings like on a cruise ship or they are uh, in a camp or in a school or in a hospital or in a nursing home so whenever people uh, stay in groups you always suspect this problem and if they have non-bloody diarrhea that's another common thing for example uh, a cruise ship is going 40 percent of the people on the cruise ship developed a, a non-bloody diarrhea what do you suspect? You should always suspect Norwalk virus on the top of your list because that is most common virus that is seen in cruise ship people. Because this virus, it uh, goes from person to person. It is uh, resistant to chlorination and it even stays on uh, dry, uh, dry areas. That's why we always encourage people to hand wash whenever they go in these settings. So it is typically limited to the mucosal cells of the intestinal tract. So this virus attaches to the intestinal tract and causes watery diarrhea. Many people even develop asymptomatic infection. Uh, we know that because of detecting uh, antibodies in their blood. So the infection goes from the fecal oral route from person to person and cause a non-bloody diarrhea. Now, how do you diagnose this condition? Patients will develop a sudden onset of uh, diarrhea accompanied by low-grade fever and abdominal cramping. So the, these people do not have any WBC in their stools. That's another characteristic law. No WBC in the stool. There are no long-term sequelae. But if an immunocompromised patient get this condition, it could become a chronic thing in them. But in most patients, it's a self-limited condition. And when they get this problem, they can also actually get develop CNS manifestations like photophobia and oxidation. So give some um, uh, importance to the diagnosis of this problem. You don't do any other test because this diagnosis is made clinically, but polymerase chain reaction is used when uh, a town, the whole town is involved, then the public health officials might use polymerase, polymerase chain reaction. Now treatment, there are no vaccines available. There are no antivirals available. All you need is to treat symptomatically. These patients have vomitings and diarrhea. So these patients develop dehydration. 
So you treat dehydration with IV fluids in a good setting and you encourage hygienic measures like uh, hand washing and uh, uh, not sharing the same utensils by different kinds of people because this virus is transmitted from person to person um, through fecal oral routes. So mainly remember those points. Norwalk virus, if you see a question a cruise ship okay and uh, like 40% uh, 50% of the people who are on cruise they developed uh, a non-bloody diarrhea they are in Caribbean region and uh, what do you suspect it's Norwalk virus remember this because this is the most common cause of non-bloody diarrhea around the world and definitely you will get questions on this as I came across some questions on Norwalk virus okay that's a very very important point I want to mention um, I encourage you to visit our website at www.usmlevideos.net that is www.usmlevideos.net and many of you have uh, have been asking me about the best book for USMLE clinical skills I recommend USMLE Smasher. USMLE Smasher is a very well written book on all the tips you need and uh, case encounters in a very very easy language and in this book there are like 10 cases where doctor patient communication is written in a case wise manner so go through this and there are many many mnemonics this book is available in amazon and bands novel and uh, get usml smasher and this is the definitely a uh, best book to go and as i said go to our website at www usmlevideos.net you can find hundreds of videos preparing for your step one step two and step three thank you very much